Now that we have covered the Fool card and have gained an understanding for the true symbolism within this card and its connection to Orion, our God Consciousness, let us move on to the next two cards. For these are the cards that give us the first glimpses into the truth of who we really are. And that truth is, we are much more than our physical containers. We are ethereal beings first and foremost. The following two cards are card number one, the magician, and card number two, the high priestess. Now, if we look to the Fibonacci sequence, and as explained in the previous video, is what all growth and expansion in the universe is based upon, we can see how these two cards relate to the following two numbers in this sequence, which are one plus one. When we look where these two numbers are located in the golden mean spiral, we see that although they are separate, they are still contained together in the first golden mean section. This is symbolic of the soul birthed into existence from the consciousness of God represented by zero and splitting into male and female upon its manifestation into existence. The ancient Egyptians refer to this in their text as when he was one became three. If we also look at the red line within the golden mean spiral, we see it begins at the corner of this first golden mean section containing these two numbers. Also note that the line touches only three sides of the first section, showing us the first representation of the Trinity, which is symbolic of God and the male and female divine twin souls. Now we understand where these two cards correlate to in the Fibonacci sequence and the golden mean spiral. Let us look at these cards and the information encoded within them in more detail. As mentioned before, the first card is the magician and this card is symbolic for the divine male twin soul in the ethereal form. At this stage, the divine male soul, as with the divine female soul, still only exist in the ethereal state and have not yet birthed onto the physical plane. The magician stands behind his table with his tools that are symbolic for the skills and abilities he has at his disposal. For in the ethereal form, we have access to much more power and knowledge as we are closer to the divine. Above his head is the infinity symbol showing he is immortal and there are also eight red roses at the very top symbolizing God's infinite energy. For not only is eight symbolic of the immortal soul but also infinite God energy and it is no coincidence that the number eight when turned sideways represents infinity. For many numbers are not just relaying a numerical value they are also a symbol within themselves. We see that the magician's left hand is held up towards God. He is holding a scroll which represents the Torah and is symbolic of divine knowledge. His other hand points down to the ground, showing that he brings this knowledge with him to be manifest onto the physical plane below. The word Torah comes from the Hebrew root Yara, which means the mark or the law of God. Notice, however, the Torah scroll is unopened. For this is symbolizing that although he has this knowledge within him, he has no real understanding of it. For it is the divine female twin soul, the high priestess, who has the understanding for this divine knowledge. And we see this symbolized by the Torah that now sits open on her lap. Before we look into the other symbols shown within these two cards, let us first get a clear understanding of how the divine male and female twin souls must work together to unlock the divine knowledge within them and how we see this shown repeatedly in mythology across culture. In the Kabbalah Tree of Life, we now know that the first Sephirot, Ketha, represents Orion and God Consciousness. So now we see the following two Sephirot are called Chokmah, which equates to wisdom and Bina to understanding. Chokma is representing the magician and Bina represents the high priestess. This is also why we see the positive energy force related to Chokma, male, and the negative energy force to Bina, female, as these are the characteristics of energy connected to the male and female. However, it is at this point I must stress that positive and negative energy do not equate to gender. The attributes of energy are just one aspect within gender. Unfortunately, many fall into this simplistic understanding of gender 
and use it as just another label equating it only to left and right brain hemispheres or positive negative energy. And it is unfortunate to see many who never move beyond this simplistic understanding. Now when we translate this to Christian mythology, we see that Jesus is symbolic for the divine male twin soul. And as the magician shows us, he is the receptacle of divine knowledge. And as such, he is the Ark of the Covenant. When we look to the Gnostics, we see that they revered Mary Magdalene as a teacher and called her the Holy Grail. We often see Jesus referred to as the Son of God. And this is because the divine male soul has a part of God's divine knowledge within him. This is also why he is called the Lamb of God, for this is representing a part of God being brought back to the divine male when the light of Orion, God consciousness, returns, and he has access once more to the divine knowledge he holds within him. So now we understand why the Gnostics revered Mary Magdalene and called her the Holy Grail, for she is the key that has the ability to unlock this divine knowledge from the Ark of the Covenant, who is the divine male twin soul. However, as mentioned before, this is a theme that we will see repeated across culture in other mythology as well. Let us first look to the Norse mythology. And here we see it is Odin, who is not only symbolic of Orion and God consciousness, but also the divine male twin soul. The story goes that Odin, symbolic in this instance for the divine male twin soul, hangs from the world tree for nine days and nine nights, pierced in the side by his own spear. This is seen also with Jesus, who is pierced in the side with a spear when he hangs from the cross. And in Mark 15, verse 33, it states, and when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. So we see again the number nine is mentioned in both accounts of Odin and Jesus. The number nine is the number of the divine. It is the trinity within the trinity, like a fractal within a fractal. It is symbolic of the male and female divine souls reuniting with God consciousness and shows each holds a part of the divine within them as well as each other. This is symbolized by the snake around the waist of the magician in the shape of a circle, representing the female twin soul. And the outstretched snake that sits behind the pillars and curtain of the high priestess card is symbolic of the phallus and the male soul. The circle and rod, which are symbolic for the male and female, are repeatedly seen represented in symbolism across cultures. For more understanding of this, we can also look to the yin-yang symbol that shows the male and female twin soul, each with a part of the other within them. Yin-yang is not representing energy as we have been led to believe, for energy must be absolute in its polarity. What this ancient symbol is representing are the twin souls. So let us return to Odin, who hung from the world tree for nine days and nine nights, after this time, he is given divine knowledge by way of the runes, but it is said that it is Freya, his consort, the embodiment of the divine female twin soul that teaches Odin the magic and knowledge of the runes. However, even when we look to Odin in his representation of Orion and God consciousness, we see that he has two ravens called Hugin and Munin. In Old Norse, Hugin means thought, and Munin means memory or mind. So here we see that Hugin represents the divine female soul's ability to understand or have thought, and Munin representing memory or mind is symbolic of the divine wisdom held within the male soul. It is said that Odin sends these ravens out at sunrise to fly all over the world and bring information back to him at sunset. And although he fears that Hugin, thought, may not return, it is Munin, memory, that he fears for the most. And this is because, as we will see when we visit the card of the Emperor, it is the physical attributes of the male twin soul that are more connected to the foundational characteristics. Whereas the female twin soul has more of a connection to the ethereal. Due to these foundational attributes of the male twin soul, as we descend into lower consciousness, they are the first to lose the memory of their divinity. And when consciousness returns, their ability to remember their divinity takes longer to return. We see this also in the Zohar with Lilith, 
leaving the garden in disgust because Adam no longer sees her as his equal. Once again, this is representing the male twin soul's descent into lower consciousness and his loss of memory in regards to his divinity. However, in regards to Norse mythology, it is also interesting to note that the Norse people say that their mythology is not actually speaking of past events, but is in fact prophecy. But it does not end with Norse mythology, for as we look between the many layers of Hindu mythology, we can see the god Shiva and his consort Shakti once again symbolise the divine male and female twin souls in their ethereal form. In this depiction of Shiva and Shakti, we can see that the light of Vishnu, who symbolises the god consciousness of Orion, is shown shining down onto Shiva's head and then transferred from his hand into a receptacle called a lingam. The lingam is a container and correlates to the Ark of the Covenant. The word lingam is Sanskrit for mark, and if we remember, the Torah is also Hebrew for mark. Shiva's consort Shakti's equivalent of the lingam is the yoni, and due to it being a receptacle for the lingam, it is often mistaken to be symbolic of the female genitals. However, as with the lingam being equated to a phallic symbol, there is no mention of this being the case in any Hindu texts. Like with the divine male twin soul Shiva, there are many different aspects to the divine female twin soul Shakti, represented by other goddesses within the Hindu mythology. The goddess associated with the characteristics of knowledge within Shakti is Saraswati, who represents knowledge, music, art and science. Saraswati is the wife of Vishnu. Once again, we remember Vishnu being symbolic for God consciousness and Orion. So we see the direct connection of divine knowledge and the divine female twin soul. Vishnu, however, also has other aspects depicted by different gods and the aspect symbolic for the creation of souls from God consciousness is symbolized by Brahma. And it is said that it was with Saraswati's knowledge that Brahma created the universe. Again, we see that it is the divine female twin soul that has the understanding of divine knowledge. So it is not surprising the religious establishments had an agenda to remove her completely to any connection of knowledge and intellect and instead made her only symbolic of reproduction. Finally, we can look to Sumerian mythology and we see it is the god Tammuz and the goddess Ishtar who are symbolic for the divine male and female twin souls in the ethereal form. Tammuz was known as the faithful or true son. And we see again this equating of the son of God to the divine male twin soul. Interestingly, Tammuz is also a Jewish day related to Moses and divine knowledge. The goddess Ishtar, symbolic for the divine female twin soul, was said to have brought the gift of the arts, speech, reading and writing to humans. However, it is said that these gifts were kept away from the primitive humans, showing that divine knowledge is only accessible in a time of higher consciousness when the light of Orion once again returns to us. It is also said that these gifts were not Ishtar's to give, but in fact she had to receive them from her father Enki first. Enki represents Orion God Consciousness. So again we see that it is the divine female twin soul that has an understanding for divine knowledge, while it is the divine male twin soul that carries it within him as the son of God. So it seems that by universal design that no one being, male or female, has complete access to divine knowledge. Therefore, no one being has complete power. And we see this reflected in Plato's philosophical text, called the Symposium, where he writes, According to Greek mythology, humans were originally created with four arms, four legs, and a head with two faces. Fearing their power, Zeus split them in two separate beings, condemning them to spend their lives in search for their other halves. So now we have a thorough understanding for the roles of each divine twin soul in regards to accessing divine knowledge. We can begin to look further into the rest of the symbolism within the magician and high priestess tarot cards in the next video.